Okay, let's look at project five. Well, now we're gonna start playing some games with some portfolios. In this particular case, we're gonna look at some mutual funds. So what we wanna do is to create some portfolios of mutual funds, combine that with um, creating, hence a risk-free, excuse me, a risky portfolio of two assets. I'm gonna combine that with a risk-free asset and then look at how we might uh, invest based on uh, some risk aversion questions. So let's let's work our way through through this uh, example. So first thing we have to do is we have to go. Uh, you have to open Project Five tab. And again, of course, we, we, this is uh, already identified as Project Five. We need to create some data points. So you're going to select two mutual funds from project 1B. So here's the 1B. You're just gonna go up here and we're gonna pick two of these. So let's choose, um, choose I, I'm gonna choose two that are side by side. And quite frankly, I guess you don't have to do this with two mutual funds. I guess you could pick almost any two investments that you wanted to. Uh, with the exception of you wouldn't want to pick a treasury bond because again that's our risk-free asset so um, again pick any two things that you would like and choose two mutual funds I think is the easiest way and if you remember these uh, are mutual funds this is a, a an index or a uh, mutual fund ACEIX uh, we didn't talk about specifically what they are it's about 60% stocks and 40% bonds. And IBVAX is actually an international um, uh, portfolio. So again, all we're gonna do, you highlight the risk and return, mean and standard deviation, do a little right click, copy. Now let's go back to project five. So you're gonna put it in this box. Now what we need to do because we don't want to carry forward uh, all of the, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, we don't want to carry forward all the indications of uh, uh, what project one worked with. You'll see what I mean here in a second. We want it just to be the number in percent form. So if you do right click, do paste special, we want values and you want to transpose. Because right now it's returns on the top, standard deviation, and we want it to go from left to right. Just click OK. So here are our returns. You need to get the um, names of the assets, right? So again, I'm just doing this again. So you just do this, copy, go back to project five. Again, paste special, transpose. Boom. That's done. Now we need the correlation, right? So again, you, you need to find that correlation. Go back to 1B. We need to scroll down here. Here's our IBVAX. And if you go across here, this is the correlation between those two uh, mutual funds. So again, click. Uh, we're going to copy. Again, mo move the page five or project five. Put it in the cell. And again, you can just copy, and it'll just copy that here, so we're good. Okay, so now we have our data in place. The risk-free things, these are already come from our data, so we don't have to uh, use that. Um, however, I mean, if we wanted to, I guess we could incorporate treasury bonds. If you go back here, we do know that there are T bonds in here. I wanna make sure which data I used. And we have two things we can use. You can either use uh, T bonds or you could use the T bills or T bonds. And what I used was the T bonds. So again, if you just copy that, come back to five, put that in here again, you can see it's already here. Again, we wanna pay special, transpose values, boom. So now all we have is numbers here we don't have it linking back to a previous worksheet. By the way, when you open these and it asks you what you wanna do with links, I would always get in and cancel the link. Um, I'll show you how to do that here maybe in a couple of minutes. 
So the next thing we need to do, oops, I'm sorry, we didn't do this as a pay special. So now we got to go back and do that again. So let's go back, all right? So here we go, where our things are there. That's these two, copy, go back to five, click right, pay special, values, transpose, bake. So now we're good. So now we have the two mutual funds, we have the risk-free asset, returns, correlation. Now the next thing you do is you need to pick a weighting scheme, right? How, how do you want to invest these two portfolios? So again, pick any number you want, you know, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Um, so I pick, I'm gonna pick 75%, pick anything you want. When you choose 75%, things start to happen, right? So now we have our risky portfolio, 75% here, 25% here. This is the return on our risky portfolio. And this is the standard deviation of our risky portfolio. So now we're down here. So what's the risk of return of the risky portfolio? Again, you have your weights, right? What are the weights? They'll put those here. So it's 75, 25. Uh, here's the returns is 0.346%, 4.285%. Great. So now we're down to the next. Now we want to create a portfolio that combines the risky portfolio with the risk-free portfolio. Again, if you remember in our discussion, we're ultimately trying to find that capital allocation line that designates we want to identify the maximum um, sharp ratio of a combination of risk-free and invest and risky assets based on, again, based on our own potential um, risk aversion. So we need to pick a number. So let's pick. I'm going to pick three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Let's say I want to put uh, in my risk-free assets, I'm only going to put 25,000 in there. So we have um, 325,000 in the risky, 25,000 in the risk-free, total of 350,000. And again, here are the portfolios, again, the weights of the individual components of these combined portfolios. So you have 69.64 in portfolio one, 23.2% in two and 7.14 in the risk-free. So this brings us down here to uh, part D. The next thing we have to do is now we need to scroll down a little bit further to our worksheet. Scroll down a little bit further till we find this capital allocation line uh, worksheet part. Again, we need to put in our portfolio. So we got $350,000 in here. The risk-free asset, $25,000. How much is in ACEIX? Well, if you look above there, $243,750,000. Means obviously the rest is in IBVAX. So again, here's the weights. We know these are all correct now because they're all matching what was above. Here are the weights of our portfolios. Again, they're all matching from above. The total weight of the risky portfolio is 92.86%, right? So this is all kind of matching what we did uh, up above. So now the next question is, you input your data from above. We looked at the risk and return of this portfolio. And again, down here, 0.322% is the return and 3.98% is the risky part of this portfolio. If we want to include, again, we have to double, we should have double checked it down here first. We've got to make sure that these numbers are all correct, right? So what is the return of the risky portfolio? That was up here, should be that number there, 0.346. That's correct. Right, it points to that. What's the return on the risk free? We have that. Standard deviation, that's up here, right? 
So we have all the data is falling into place. The reason these are yellow is in a problem, you might be given this and you might want to solve for this thing outside. Standard deviation for the risk-free asset, we're assuming that it's zero. Now in reality, standard deviation for risk-free assets really isn't zero, right? I mean, if you look at real data, but theoretically a risk-free asset should not have standard deviation. The standard deviation that we're recognizing here is the standard deviation of the changing prices um, back and forth between the different kinds of um, uh, the market variations, if you will. So now, if all the data is correct, so this is beautiful. So now what we need to do is you need to think of what is your potential risk aversion? Again, there's no real way to calculate this. I haven't been able to find a, um, a um, commercial tool that will help us to calculate risk aversion, but we know that most people are between two and four. So if you think that you're a fairly risk person, risky uh, person, you might want to be a little bit lower. If you think you're a little bit on the risky side, be a little bit higher. Again, I chose, I'm going to choose uh, 3.50. Uh, 3 so that's my risk aversion. Now what we want to do is we want to look at our utility curves. And that's what this does. If you scroll down, here are the utility curves for these portfolios. And if you look across, we can find out here are the utility curves, you know, one through five. How you get these or how you look at this picture or the way we want to look at this, we want to make sure that each one of these columns has positive and negative numbers, right? We want positive and negative numbers. If you look at these two, there's no negative numbers here. So what we might want to do is try to manipulate this a little bit. What if we started this at um, 40 percent, right? If we started 40, oh, there, see, now down here we have a, a negative number. So what this does is just shows us, excuse me, I want to, let me, let me go back and retract that for a minute, right? What we want to do is we want to be able to see the maximum, right? We want to see where the change curve changes. If you go, we have three zeros and a four, three zeros and a four. So somewhere between here, it changes lanes. Sometimes you might have to, maybe we have to go out a couple of more decimal points in order to exactly see where the, where the change is made. So again, if you just highlight these, let's get, make sure we get these all in here. Again, all we want to do is see where the value changes. So let's just, you know, you can, oops, I'm sorry, it's not liking me to do that because I chose the labels. I got to not change the, don't choose the labels when you want to do this. This should work now. Right, so now if we click out a couple, now you can see that what, where does it change? 0.929495. Right here, it goes from 0.095 to 096. So right here, this portfolio, is the portfolio that would maximize my utility, my personal utility. So I would want 55% of my money in the risky asset. So again, if I go back up here, I can change this risky portfolio and create now the weights that I want. So if I go up here, right, I want the risky investment, the risk, the, the, um, yeah, so I want this to be 55%, right? So now, again, this works its way out, 55%. Now we know what's invested in each one of these assets, right? Now it follows down through that I should get a expected return on my portfolio of 0.256 and 4.08%. You can also then look at what happens for the other assets. Again, we're looking for the change from a maximum to getting lower. So almost all of these, you're going to see that change, right? So here's 004, 006, 789, right? 
Here's 008. So these don't see, are we getting smaller? 07. Yeah, so somewhere in the middle here, it's changing over. 87, 917, 95, 97, 99. So right here, this is where a person with a utility of 2.0 this is the portfolio that they would want. That would maximize their utility. So again, the objective of this is to try to find that portfolio that would, uh, that would um, identify the maximum utility given your personal risk aversion. So again, which ones are most desirable? Again, if you put down here the, the, the weight of the risky, again, we can find out what is the maximum utility. It just asks you to fill in the blanks, right? If I were here, right here about your risk aversion, put your risk aversion in there. And of course, 3.5, the weights they should be in between here, the maximum utility should be in between there, okay? So again, this is just, a view, if you will, of trying to find a portfolio from choices. Again, we're only using two assets. Certainly, we could create a much more complicated version that we could use all of those assets. Maybe we'll do that in another project. But now we want to, we can identify that portfolio that will maximize your personal utility. So that is project five.